and record. Let somebody in chat. Uh, sure, Mia, give me one moment. Just letting people in. And for some reason, I am paused. I have paused my sharing. So let me start this over since I'm just confused. So if I was to just have a different graph uh, off to the side here, and these, this is my X, Y axis here, and I just wanted to graph this portion only, okay? How would that graph look, okay? Well, that graph is only defined for values of X between negative three and one. So I'm only looking on that, uh, for those values of X on that interval. And it says the Y coordinate is zero for all of those pieces, okay? So um, now at negative three, since it's a strict inequality, meaning it does not say the or equal to, it says negative three is less than X. That means we, get, we don't include the negative three. So that means we put an open circle there. For the other piece, at, or for the other side at one, it's also a strict inequality. So that means we're gonna put an open circle there. And I'm putting them at uh, with a Y coordinate of zero because that's what it says here. It says the Y coordinate is zero the entire time. So that's why both of these open circles have a Y coordinate of zero. And then everything in between is also zero because it says it's zero the entire time. So the portion of the graph here is this portion right here. So that's that middle piece, okay? That's that middle line that's over here. Now, if you look at the original graph, I do have solid circles here and here, but those solid circles are not coming from the definition that's highlighted in green. The definition is coming from, oh, <laughs> so you couldn't read my writing. Uh, that's fine, I'll take the blame for that one. That's fair, Mia. Um, that's an inequality right there. That's just bad penmanship on my part. Uh, but, but again, just to finish the thought, in case that was beneficial to somebody else in the room, uh, the fact that we have the solid circles here and here come from the other two parts of the graph. Uh, this part of the graph, this definition over here, it uh, says to include what's happening at negative three. And if I plug negative three into this cubic, I do get zero. So negative three, zero is going to be a solid circle. And then the last piece, the exponential piece down over here includes one. And when I plug one in for X, we end up with two minus two, which is zero. And so um, the point one zero is also part of the graph. So it fills in the open circles that were given uh, by the middle definition uh, where they were not included with zero. So the graph does end up, end up being continuous. I hope that helped for some people. I'm gonna start setting up to graph screen 10. Um, some of you are already there, um, so that's good. Some of you I can see are struggling a little bit. How did I, what do I keep doing that pauses? Oh, resume share, there's the button, okay. Old people with technology, I just don't use Zoom enough. Although I'm starting to like it a little bit. Um, the, uh, the direct chat feature is, is uh, so if I want to send an individual direct message is kind of nice. I'm not sure Google Meet does that. Um, and there are a few other little things. I don't like the recording setup. It takes me a little more work to get the recordings done because I got to put them on YouTube. Um, Sure, Stephen, I'll get the, let me get the Desmos link. There you go.
I think this one has four pieces in the definition. So one over X plus four and then plus two. When X is less than negative four, five, when X is equal to negative four, negative absolute value of the quantity X plus three plus one between negative four and two exclusive, excluding the endpoints. And then two X minus four for X greater than or equal to two. I don't know, I keep hitting something that causes my sharing to pause. I'm not sure what that is. So every time I navigate away from my shared screen, it wants to pause. I did something, I don't know what I did. Yeah, I'm not, because uh, I navigated away from my what I was presenting, so it paused it. Now, it's back, but I don't have anything there that's useful anyways. Um, I'm navigating away so I can look at what you guys are doing on Desmos and gauge whether I should start talking or just wait. And I think right now it's, I'm in a wait, uh, waiting pattern here just to let people continue to try to graph it on their own before I start to speak too much. It looks like something's going on with Zoom, with my Zoom right now, because it's giving me what looks like an error message. It's telling me to please move this window away from the shared application. I'm not sure what that means. So some, something's going on with Zoom right now, but so be it. So we should know how to graph each of these pieces by themselves. And for a piecewise defined function, all you're doing is just taking only the part of the graph that's in the X region given for that particular piece and showing that portion only. And yes, they can get complicated. Yes, they can be, there can be many pieces. Here's a little clue, because I'm not seeing many of you uh, abide by this. If what you graph is not the graph of a function, meaning it doesn't have, it doesn't meet the definition, or if the vertical line test doesn't apply, um, or doesn't you know, verify that it's a function, then what you've graphed is incorrect. It's gotta be a function. Or let's, let, me, let me add one more little caveat to that. Maybe I made the mistake. Maybe the way I define the function, it turns out to not be a function, because that's, I'm human. I make mistakes, you guys have seen that already. Um, but it's not the case. This example here, it will look like a function. I defined this one properly. And so um, if you draw it correctly, your, your graph should be that of a function. And some of you have things that are not functions shown. And so
You guys ready for me to start? There you go. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm type into the chat. Nobody seems to care. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you're trying to get as much out of this as possible. So if me starting now is helpful, you should tell me. If me starting now is not helpful, you should tell me. All right, I got one comment. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Isabel. All right, I guess I better present my screen if I'm going to start. So I tend to just start with the first piece and then the second piece and then the third. I just keep going in order. You don't have to. You could start with any piece that you want, okay? So uh, just because I do something a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it in exactly the same way. As I'll say uh, over time and time again, uh, give me correct answers and give me justification for how you got it. That's what matters, okay? So following me exactly is not the, not the goal. Now I'm gonna go, I am gonna go piece by piece. Uh, so let's start, I'll, uh, I'll do the first graph in black and then I'll trace it, uh, the part I wanna keep in red and then delete the black part. So the first part is a hyperbola and it's the hyperbola, we have a, the X plus four in the denominator says we're shifting the hyperbola four units to the left. The plus two is gonna be a shift upward two units. So that means the, the, the hyperbola is going to have a uh, vertical asymptote at x equals negative four. Uh, I'll keep that in there. That's going to stay in there in black. And it's going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals two. But since we're only dealing with x less than negative four, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to keep drawing it towards the right. I'm going to stop it right where I did here uh, because the, you know, the, the hyperbola graph doesn't keep going for values of x bigger than negative four. So there's no point in drawing the horizontal asymptote any further to the right. So I'm just going to stop it. Other than that, the hyperbola is exactly the same. It's not flipped. It's not stretched. It's just that hyperbola, you know, shifted four units to the, to the right. I'm sorry, to the left and two units up. So the hyperbola at this point is going to look like this. Now, normally there, also, there would also be a part up here, okay? I'm not gonna draw that part up here because um, we're only looking for X less than negative four and this vertical dashed line is at X equals negative four. So I only want the stuff that's to the left anyways. So that's all I'm gonna draw for the first piece. The first piece is done, okay? And I said I was gonna trace it in red, the part I'm gonna keep. So even though I did it, I really like how my graph came out there. Yeah, not bad in red still. I'm not gonna try to delete the black part. That's good enough just like that. The next piece is a single point, ladies and gentlemen. It's only got one X value. It says the output is five when the input is negative four. So that next, that second piece is a single point, negative four, five. So here's negative four, one, two, three, four, five. So it's a single point at negative four, five. There's two pieces down. Now we have this third piece, which is a um, transformed absolute value graph. It's shifted three units left. It's flipped downward and then shifted up one unit. Okay. So normally the absolute value graph would be, you know, just like this here at the origin. Okay. But we got to move that three units to the left because of the X plus three. So one, two, three. So now it would go like this, but we got to flip it down. So that's not right. So it looked like this, but that's still not right because I got to shift it up one unit, okay? 
So it's actually going to look like it's the, the vertex of it's going to be right here. Now, I, I got to draw the other pieces, but I want to pay attention to where I'm drawing it to. Notice that it's to x equals negative 4, but not including um, the value at negative 4. Negative 4 is right here. So there, we're going to have an open circle right here. And then we'll have that line. That's supposed to be a straight line. It's decent. And then we're going to go out to x equals 2. Now, x equals 2 is way over here. Now, where is it going to hit? Well, let's calculate it. So if I plug in 2 for x, 2 plus 3 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is still 5. Make it negative now because that negative out in front. Negative 5 and 1 is negative 4. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, negative 4. And it's going to be an open circle at 2, negative 4 because it's not including the, the, uh, the 2. It's a really big open circle there. A little smaller. And then it should go just like that. The last piece is linear. It includes what's happening at two. So if you want, you could just go and draw the line just as you normally would. Go down four, one, two, three, four. And then it's got a slope of two. So you're gonna go up two and over one and up two and over one. And then draw the line. Whoa, that's not very straight. Something like that. But we only want from when X is greater than or equal to two. And so if I plug in two, we actually get zero. So it's gonna hit right here and it's included. So it's a solid circle. And then it's gonna go off in this direction here like that. And then the black piece there is going to go, whoops, got that problem, can't delete the point on the axis again. So what's, what you see in red is my hand sketch version of what this graph should look like. Is it continuous? Well, you'll go on to the next screen and ask that, answer that question. Sorry, I just paused it. So I'll leave it up for another moment so you can see it, but then I'm going to switch because I want to see where you guys are and open up more. More screens. Remember, you're supposed to tell me why on screen 11, why it is continuous or why it is not continuous. And some of you are very stubborn. You want to put it in words differently than what I said, which is okay if the words are good. But we're using an intuitive definition where we're talking about the graph can, whether it can be traced with, with, with or without using your pen. Boy, that doesn't make sense. Whether you can trace it with your pen, uh, without lifting your pen or not. All right, one more, pro one more uh, chance to practice. No, actually that's not true. We'll have more chances to practice this, but uh, we're gonna tie in another concept um, on screen 14. So you're gonna graph this function on screen 12, screen 13, we'll talk about whether, we'll ask you again, whether it's continuous or not. And then on screen 14, we're gonna take the same function and transform it. So we're gonna connect this to another topic in just a moment. As always, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, you should be asking them. Let me know how I can help, if I can help, if you want my help.
again, if what you're drawing turns out to not be a function, then something's, something's wrong. Are you guys gonna want me to walk step-by-step step through graphing this one too? It's okay. I'm willing to, but I don't need to if we are feeling that we're starting to get it or you're just tired of hearing me do it over and over again. Thank you, Monique. I appreciate the uh, interaction. All right, I'm gonna start walking through this one. So you may wanna start with uh, the bottom piece this time because it's always 17. And of course, I didn't think about that when I drew my scale here. And uh, 17 seems way, way, way off my uh, screen. How far do I got here? Two, four, six. <laughs> uh, all right, never mind, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a minute. Uh, I want to think about this. Wow, it's a bad horizontal line, but it's fine. Uh, let's see. I need to move it down a couple anyways. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think. Yeah, 
Okay. So when uh, X is greater than one, so I would put an open circle at one and I would draw the graph of 17 just with an arrow in that direction looking something like this. The next piece um, is a linear piece. Uh, the, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't draw, and I'm old, I've been doing this a long time, so you, you know, this is the way my brain works now and I try to share it with you guys so you can get a better understanding, uh, at least I hope. I would plug in the one for X and see what I get. Then I would plug in negative four for X and see what I get. And then it's a straight line between the two. I wouldn't go, you know, rise over run, plot a plot. I wouldn't do any of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I plug in one, one plus four is five times three is 15 plus two is 17. So it actually fills in this circle at one, 17 right here. And then if I plug in negative four, uh, negative four and four is zero times three is to zero plus two. So it's gonna be at negative four, zero. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, I said negative four, zero. I'm at negative four, two. And it's going to be an open circle there. And so now I just got to draw a straight line between those two things. And it's probably a bad idea to do it by hand, but I'm going to try anyways. That was bad. That was better. And then the last piece is uh, this parabola. Again, I would plug in negative four just to see what I get because it's going to be a solid circle at negative four. If I plug in negative four, negative four and five make one. One squared is still one times negative. So it's negative one plus three, which is two. So it actually fills in the circle here at negative four, two. And then it's a parabola shifted five units to the left and three units up. So five units uh, to the left is right here, three units up. The vertex is right here. It opens downward because of the negative. So it's going to go here. And we already said it hits that point. And then it's going to look like this in that direction. And that's what the graph looks like. Now, can I trace it without lifting my pen? So the, the arrowhead doesn't count as far as the trace is concerned. Well, I can't trace anything apparently. It doesn't have to be a perfect trace, okay? And then all of this, wow, bad, 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 bad. I could in theory trace it, uh, but uh, I can't just make my the muscles in my arm do that at the moment, muscles in arm and hand, anyway. So yes, it's gonna be continuous. In other words, as I just keep uh, droning on about. I've opened up screen number 14. Now it says, it repeats the command to, to uh, sketch this same function, but I already have the function there on the screen. On, on the next screen, I'm gonna give you a different piecewise function. You're gonna sketch it, and then you're gonna have one that's transform, another function kind of like H of X, I think I called it G on the next screen, I don't remember. And I totally screwed this one up. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, there is a typo on the screen on number 14. It should say let h of x equal f of x minus two minus four, not g. That's my fault. So you need to read that with an f in place of that g. I don't know what I was thinking when I typed it in last night. So the, the, the graph of f is already given to you in this example. It won't be given to you in the next example. And at least I used the lettering correctly in that one. I didn't screw up like I did here. So what I want you to do is the second part of this where it says, let H of X be, this should be F of the quantity X minus two minus four. I want you to sketch H of X, which is just the graph of F transformed. And then I want you to, to write H of X in terms of X. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But if you already know, then you know, go ahead and input it into the uh, 
uh, dialog box there below. Oh no, you guys aren't going to be able to do it that way. Did I forget to add that feature to it? Um, you're going to have to write your piecewise function for part B in the screen. I was going to add, and I forgot what I was doing when I did this last night. Um, I was going to add another sketch pad so you could write it in by hand because it's too hard to, to uh, you're not going to be able to get this bracket here. Anyways, do the best you can type it in or write it in. You're not, you won't get the brace, but uh, with multiple levels, but that's okay. You'll figure it out. Yeah, you don't see anything on the screen because I'm just talking about the Desmos activity. Um, I, there's nothing on my screen worth looking at. I'm just talking about the Desmos activity. So no, no worries about that. Uh, just look at the Desmos activity on screen number 14. Um, f of x is given to you in the picture, as I was saying. h of x, where it says g in, in the definition of h, let h of x equal, it should be f instead of g. And I want you to sketch h, and you should be able to do that because h is just a transformation, two transformations actually, on f. So you should be able to make that sketch. And then I want you to write h in terms of x. And yeah, I'm not sharing anything on my screen that's important right now anyway. Don't worry about using the uh, the the brace. And if you're going to type it in, don't worry about using the brace. Just use three separate lines for what it would look like um, with the restrictions. It's Desmos doesn't have a good way of putting in piecewise definitions in how they look and how they're supposed to look. It's fine. You can just give it to me in three different pieces if you want to type it in, or you could write it in some white space on the graph. You shouldn't click the show graph button until after you've done the sketch. Some of you aren't doing much in the Desmos activity. It's not graded, but it's definitely, you're not getting the practice that you should. You're not getting the trial and error. You're not getting the comments that I'm making. Um, uh, I guarantee you're just not learning. You're not learning the way you, at the level you could be.
Mathematics is not a spectator sport. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be active. I could talk all day and dazzle you with mathematics and make you seem like you understand everything that I'm talking about and then give you a problem and you can't do anything with it because you never actually did anything while I was talking or demonstrating or showing. Guarantee you it's different. Listening and doing don't achieve the same thing. You should do both. One is better than the other, but both are better than either. Doing is better than listening. Doing and listening is better than just doing or just listening. So the transformations that are happening on the graph of um, F to create the graph of H is a horizontal shift two units to the right and a vertical shift down four units. So when you go to sketch the graph, you should be taking the graph that we drew earlier, which I'm now projecting for you. And we just got to move it again. And, like I said, H is not written correctly. H of X should be F of the quantity X minus two minus four. That's my typo. Um, again, shift this graph two units to the right. So this corner right here up at uh, one comma 17, is gonna move two units to the right. So it's gonna move over to 317 and then four units down, one, two, three, four, and end up right here, okay? Uh, which is uh, at, uh, should be at 313. And then the rest of the graph just continues in the same fashion, moving to the right indefinitely that way. This point right here connecting the upside down parabola and the non-horizontal linear piece, again, has to move two units to the left, sorry, two units to the right and four units down. So it's gonna end up right here. And then I just can connect the two points with a straight line again, if I could aim correctly in this direction here. Uh, that's supposed to be a straight line. Apparently, I'm struggling a little bit. Close enough. That's the best one I've done. Even this vertex is uh, is going to be moved over to this point here, and the rest of it looks exactly the same. So the sketch of H is literally just a horizontal shift and a vertical shift on the original graph that we already sketched. And I gave you that original graph there just so you could see it and have something to, to shift and transform because we had it on the previous screen. My screen looks all pixelated. Does that, is that true for the rest of you? I'm going to turn off my camera for a moment to see if that uh, maybe there's some sort of uh, resource uh, drain that's causing this. And I'm going to reshare my screen. Is it any better now? No, nope. It still looks pixelated. Show some blue. Hmm. I'm not sure what I should do to fix this. I don't. Uh, I don't work in Des uh, Zoom rather that often.
I'm sharing a different screen at the moment. Does that one look pixelated? No, that one looks good. Okay. All right, so then it has something to do with, let me close, I'm gonna close my notes uh, application and see if I relaunch that, if it'll look better. How does, how does it look now? Does it look okay? Still blue, still some blue. Is it blue now? Because I just closed my chat box. But now I can't see the comment. <laughs> Uh, it looks fine to me. Now it's probably got a blue. Okay, I'm, I'm moving it way over here to the corner. Boy, isn't this fun when, when technology doesn't help. All right, I'm going to keep going. I hope you can see what I'm doing. If not, uh, well, we'll have to figure something out or I'll have to do it again later. So to do the second part to write H in terms of X, notice that H right now has F in it still. We don't want that. We want H to have just X in it. And so to do that, I gotta, I'm gonna take the original function F and I'm gonna substitute in its place. I got some drain happening here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close some background windows. Maybe I just got too much, too many resources draining my system here. Sorry, just closing windows, trying to free up some resources of the computer. I don't know if any of that helped. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piecewise defined function for f. And every place I see an x, I'm going to replace the x with the x minus 2. And then at the end of every expression, I still have to subtract 4. I still have to do that also, at least on the definition side of it. I'll explain what that means in just a moment. So the first piece has negative and then x plus 5. So it's going to be x minus 2 plus 5, because I'm replacing the x with x minus 2. And then I got to square that. And then I still have the plus 3. And then at the end, I got to put this minus 4. Now on the do domain side of things, after the col semicolon there, I still have an X. So I'm gonna replace that X with X minus two and, and then have that less than or equal to negative four. I don't subtract four from anything in the domain side because that minus four is not part of the domain. That minus four is part of the, uh, uh, it's the vertical shift. So it's part of what affects the Y values, not the X values. Continuing. 3 times the quantity x minus 2 plus 4 plus 2 minus 4, negative 4 less than x minus 2 less than or equal to 1. And the last piece, there are no x's for the 17. So it's just 17. I don't put the x minus 2 anywhere, but I still have to subtract 4 from it because that's still the y coordinate. 
And then over here, x minus two, there's an x there. So I replace that x with x minus two greater than one. This is h of x in terms of x. I hope you can see it. Wonder how it's gonna come out on the recording because on my, on my screen, it looks fine. So I'm just wondering. Now you can simplify it or not, but I am gonna suggest that we simplify at least the domain part of it. I'll do a little simplifying over here because X minus two plus five is X plus three squared minus one, three minus four. Now over here, I'm gonna isolate the X by adding the two and so many X is less than or equal to negative two. And then here we're gonna get three times the quantity X plus two minus two. I'm gonna to add two to everything here, negative four and two is negative two, less than X, less than or equal to three. 17 minus four is 13. And this is for X greater than three. And if you look at the green graph, You know, things kind of match up. If we take a parabola, the parent graph shifted over three units to the uh, to the left, one, two, three, flip it over and then move it down one. Yeah, we get that picture right there. And it does start at negative two or end at negative two, depending on how you want to look at it, from negative infinity to negative two. And then we get the linear portion and then we got 13 from there on. So it looks the way it's supposed to look. You guys okay with that? I know it's not showing you anything right now because I navigated off the screen. There is something wrong with the, my Zoom right now. I'm not sure what's wrong with my Zoom. But I opened up screen 15. So you can try this one more time. And we might take an early lunch so that I can give my computer a chance to fix itself, uh, meaning I can exit out, maybe shut it down and reboot. I stopped sharing just to, oh, maybe to lighten the load a little bit on the computer. On screen 15, don't hit the show graph button until you've graphed both F and G. Because the show graph button will show you both.
Yo, Juan, it looks like you grafted perfectly. Remember, if what you're drawing is not a function, you have a mistake somewhere. Matt, what you're drawing is not a function. Elizabeth, what you have is not a function. Just go piece by piece. They should not overlap. Karen, um, the you're doing pretty well, but the um, the right side of the square root graph and the line on that side, the third piece, do not meet. Valeria, your graph is not a function at the moment, but maybe you're gonna erase something.
Josh, I appreciate the analysis that you put in uh, the box on screen 15, but it's actually wanting you, I want you to put the function, you can leave that there if you want, you don't have to delete it, uh, but uh, answer part B in there. Angel, that's not the answer that you, the type, what you typed in is not the answer for part B. Yes, Ashley, you need parentheses. I'm gonna try sharing again. Hopefully what you see is legible. All right, so the first piece is linear. Um, if I plug in negative three, negative three minus five is negative eight. Negative one half times negative eight is a positive four. Positive four minus two is two. So we should be at negative three, two, and it should be a solid circle. And I know the slope, it's negative one half. So I can just go up one over two, go up one over two in this direction here so that my slope is negative going down from left to right. And then just draw in that like that. So that's what the first linear piece looks like. For the square root piece, I'm gonna start by plugging in the negative three to see if it hits that same point or at least uh, if we were allowed to plug in negative three, it hits that same point that the linear piece ends at when we hit negative three, or if it's a different point. So if I plug in negative three, negative three plus three is zero, square root of zero is zero, times four is zero, plus two, we do. So the square root piece is actually gonna start right here. And the square root piece would normally have an open circle, but that open circle is being filled by the linear piece in the first part of the definition. And then, you know, if we plugged in one, one plus three is four, square root of four is two, two times four is eight, eight plus two is 10. So it's gonna be at one, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. So it's gonna be at this right here. And it's gonna be an open circle at one, 10 because it says, it's a, it does not say or equal to. And then it's just a stretched out square root graph over there like this, something like that, something close. Notice my graph is still a function. Some of you are drawing you know, the other part of the line over here, and then what you get is not a function because you're not, well, you're misunderstanding something. I'm not sure what it is exactly. The last piece, uh, when x is equal to one, because x can equal one in the last piece, we're gonna get negative one plus 14, which is 13. So this is 10, 11, 12, 13 right here. And it's going to be a solid circle. Uh, we have a slope of negative one. And so I just gonna go down one over one, down one over one and draw the graph in that direction. So what you're looking at right now is the graph of F. Now I still have to graph G and I don't remember what G is, or maybe they do. It was F of, it might've been X plus three plus five. 
I'm going to switch the screen, which means you'll probably lose access to, yep. All right, but I'm back. All right, so the X plus three tells us we're going to shift left three units, the plus five up five units. And so uh, let me switch colors. So I, I like to go with these transition points right here. So where the um, linear piece and the square root piece meet, uh, we have three units to the left, one, two, three, five units up, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll plot a point, which represents the point that I just moved. And then as before, the slope of the line is negative one half. So I can go up one and over two in this direction, up one over two in this direction, and then just sketch that portion of the graph. Uh, I'm gonna go to the other uh, end point of the square root graph right here. And I'm gonna go three units to the left, one, two, three, five units up. Whoops, and it's supposed to be an open circle. And then I'll do my best to draw the same shape as best I can. Then the last piece, the last uh, piece there, I'll take its end point here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, solid circle. Down one over one. And that's what the graph of G looks like. And then we got to write G in terms of X. Which means I'm just going to replace all the X's with X plus three. And then add five at the end. And then a brief bit of simplifying just to make it look better. Technically it's correct, but you won't often see it written that way, like in an answer key or in a multiple choice test or something like that. You would see this over here. And so we might as well take a look at it in the more, more traditional form. And then distribute here, negative X minus three plus 19. So that should be a plus 16. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you guys probably still need to see that. It is 11.55. Let's take 35 minutes for lunch. And we'll come back at 12.30, and then we'll finish off everything by two. Enjoy your lunch. Sir? Yes. I have a quick question for the graph. Um, so I was looking at it, and it's negative one half. How do I, how did you get like negative one half x plus three? minus five in the graph is because like I'm trying to see, I'm looking at a graphing calculator because I thought I miscalculated anything and I don't know I don't get isn't sorry my point here is isn't five supposed to be at the front and two at the bottom um five at the front and two at the bottom i don't know what that what do you mean five at the front and two at the like bottom five step, like five steps forward two at the back 
because I'm looking here like H minus H graph and I'm looking at it and um, yeah, I'm looking at the graph like X minus H and it's negative five. So from what I could understand, you're supposed to go forward. And from K- I mean, When you say forward, do you mean to the right? Yeah, five to the right, sorry. Five to the right and no. two down. No. Are you, um, are, I'm not sure where, why you think we should go five to the right. Is it because this five over here or a different five? Um, different five, sorry. I'm Which five are we talking about? This five over here? Uh, to the most recent one, the um, the equation of negative one half x minus five minus two. The one that is x is right here. Yes, this one. Yes. Okay, but that's the original graph of f, right? That's the graph I I, I drew in black over here. That, that was this portion of the graph right here. So when you say, um, shouldn't the graph go five forward and two down, what graph are you moving forward and what graph are you moving down? Um, so I was referring to like, trend, so the first graph, I mean, the first equation, shouldn't the five go forward like go to the right five and go down by two. You're, you're tell what you're describing for me is a transformation on some other graph. So you're, you're, let me, let me start. Let me go over here for a moment and see if I can clarify what I'm talking about. Come on, give me my, give me the control I want here. I'm sorry. Okay, so if you have the graph of, I'm gonna use a different letter here, h of x is equal to x. We know that the graph would look just like this, right? Now, if you wanna transform this graph, f of x to be x minus, which, excuse me, to be h of x, h of uh, x minus five minus two, then the graph of f would take h and move it five units to the right and two units down. Are we okay with that? Oh, yes, sir, yes. Okay, so in this context here, that makes sense. The way you're describing it over here is a little bit confusing. Now I can make your interpretation work, but I'm posing the question back to you first is what are we transforming? Well, we, what we would be transforming is the graph of, let me get rid of those two pieces and this. If we took the graph of negative one half X like this, and then this first piece would be that graph transform. So what is the graph of negative one half X looks like? Where it goes to the origin. And I don't like that my axis doesn't hit the, the solid lines here. So let me move that over here. So here's the origin. We go down one over two, down one over two like this. This is what this graph would look like, right? Okay, yeah. that's the graph of H. Now, if I wanted to graph uh, F, I would take any point on here and move it five units to the right and two units down. So let's take the origin, one, two, three, four, five, and go down two, it would hit right here, okay? Let's take another point. Uh, this point right here would be moved five units to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and two units down right over here. So this graph would be this right here, as best as I could draw it freehand. Are we in agreement so far? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Now that is the same graph that I have over here in green. Just the part where it goes from negative three onwards. So if I go over here to negative three, one, two, three, uh, it should be at negative three, two, but I didn't draw it very well. Okay, so it should hit negative. Yeah, it should hit negative three, two. I just didn't draw it very well. 
Um, so if I went up one over two, it should hit this point. I'm going to erase some of this graph here. Up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. I'm, I'm still a little bit off somewhere because uh, it should hit negative three. No, no, I was right. Up one over two hits right here and then or right here and then up one over two. No, I was right. Okay, right there. So this portion of the graph from here onwards is exactly the same as this portion in the original graph that I drew over here. I understand, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a nice lunch. Thanks. You too. Who was it, by the way? Who was talking to me? Oh, Joshua. Joshua. Thank you, Josh, because I couldn't see it. My screen's all messed up right now. So, all right, Josh, enjoy your lunch. Enjoy your lunch too, sir. Thank you.